the mundane things in life that normal people take for granted, I cannot take for granted. Um, for example, I am very terrified of elevators. And normal people, you know, the ones who don't have a mental illness, wouldn't give that a second thought, right? But me, I have to navigate my whole day around that. So if I do have to take an elevator, I either have to prepare to have an anxiety attack in front of strangers or um, be able to handle the physical symptoms that come along with my anxiety attacks, such as shaking hands, um, shortness of breath, uh, my stomach gets really tight, and my thoughts become extremely irrational and I can't think properly. So I have to navigate my life as much as possible while dealing with the things that give me extreme anxiety. Um, if I could, I would avoid elevators and take the stairs. It's, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to avoid something that will give me extreme anxiety. I've had anxiety for all my life. I don't remember a time period without it. Um, but growing up in my teenage years, my anxiety was so bad. Um, I had a lot of insomnia. Um, my rational fears really made it difficult for me to, you know, live a normal life. But what I tried to do was I tried to keep my mind active and busy so I wouldn't think about having a mental illness. And in high school, I joined sports. I played an instrument called the oboe, which if you play it the wrong way, it sounds like a dying duck. And I was in a lot of after school activities, and I even had a lot of boyfriends. So it definitely looked like on the outside that I was a normal teenager. But in reality, when I would come back home or even have a moment to myself, my anxious thoughts, my irrational fears would come back and remind me that I wasn't a normal teenager. And of course, you know, no one really knew what I had. I didn't even know what I was going through, nor did my family. And it was basically, basically um, put aside as just teenage hormones. So, of course, you know, being a teenager is bad as it is, but, you know, also dealing with my mental illness and having, it, having my mental illness be because I was a teenager really, you know, affected me greatly. I started to self-loathe who I was because I couldn't understand my mind. I didn't understand the way it was working and why I was so afraid of things that I knew was ridiculous to be afraid of. But I was, and I started to hate people. I really did. I hated myself, I hated looking at people who were happy, and I really just wanted to be a normal teenager. Um, so one day, I just wrote in my symptoms on the internet, and I found many articles on anxiety disorders. And I found comfort and the courage to go see a doctor. At the age of 18, I was clinically diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. And I thought that was it. I thought I was going to be healed, and I would be a normal human being. Um, for a while during college, I definitely, you know, lived normally and I thought my anxiety was gone. But when I graduated from college, uh, I found myself in a lot of debt and unemployed. And it definitely brought a lot of that negative emotions back for me. It made me extremely afraid to leave the house. It made me look in the mirror and not see who I was and hate who I was. And yeah, it just, it was really difficult for me. So I found one night at 3 a.m., I was laying on the floor looking at the ceiling, wondering why I couldn't fit into this world. Why was this world so cruel to me because I was so vulnerable and so different? And I realized that the only way I was going to change was if I looked at myself differently, if I talked to myself better. Rather than hating who I was, I wanted to change the way I viewed myself. And I created an Instagram blog 
an Instagram account and a blog where I would record my everyday life with living with a mental illness. And I love photography and fashion, so I connected fashion and photography with mental health awareness. And rather than talking about the clothes that I was wearing on my Instagram accounts, because most of the time I was wearing Forever 21 anyway, um, I talked about my mental health. And I was extremely vulnerable and honest about everything that I was going through with living with a mental illness. And because of that, I found a community of people who were just like me, who also felt like they didn't fit in, in with the world who stigmatized us. And because of that community, I'm actually up here today. <laughs> I'm, I'm really scared, but I'm doing this because of those people. Uh, our society is... We don't have any good representation in the media. If you think of anybody with a mental illness, all you can visualize, or at least I can, is someone who is just pushed aside because they're crazy and it's comic relief, or you only see people stuck in mental health institutions and they become nothing. And I think in order for society to change, we're, the, we're society, so we need to change the way we talk to ourselves and view mental illnesses. And it starts with the way we speak to, our, to ourselves. Um, Forty million Americans suffer from a mental health condition. That is one out of five people. So someone you know has a mental illness, and most of the time they keep quiet about it, because they're so afraid of the stigma that surrounds having a mental illness. People will belittle you, will judge you, will think you're unintelligent. And that's not true at all. I mean, I don't believe the dictionary when it says vulnerability is synonymous with weakness. I disagree. I think vulnerability equals strength. And to be vulnerable is to be human, to be scared, to feel everything and accept those feelings is what's necessary. It's not easy. It's always an everyday battle. But it's a battle that I know I need to keep doing to survive and also to raise awareness. And rather than looking for someone else to be the light in your tunnel, you need to be that light for yourself. You need to stop looking for somebody else and look inside of yourself and change the way you view yourself. Find courage and fear. Find happiness and sadness and understand that it's okay to not being okay. Um, whatever you do, though, just remember if you're afraid or you're going through something, mental illness or not, you should always speak up because you owe it to yourself to speak up for, your, to speak up for yourself. You need to speak up even though your voice is shaking like mine is right now, but you just need to speak up. Thank you.